Hi, I'm Jack Shannon. Let's talk Shop Floor Mobile, specifically the purchasing module. Welcome to the Shop Floor Mobile educational series. In this video, Nick Mendolia, our Director of Client Solutions, is going to demonstrate the purchase receipt functionality within Shop Floor Mobile. Take it away, Nick. Hi, this is Nick Mendolia from Visual South. So for purchasing receipts, we're just going to click in our purchasing button. And I'm also using a PC now because I'm acting as a purchase receipt person. But again, this could be on a mobile device or any other device that you may use for mobile functionality in the shop floor. It could be a tablet, a phone, uh, an RF scanner, whatever seems to fit your environment as long as it has an internet connection and a browser. So for purchase receiving, we have four options here. And the first one is obviously the, the most important is the receiving entry. And if we go into receiving entry, what we can do here is identify the purchase order that we're receiving as your uh, item should have your purchase order on it, so you should know what that is. You may also have a dispatch ID. If this is an outside service that you placed a purchase order for and used dispatches to send those items out to that outside process, uh, things like heat treating or plating, uh, then you could use the dispatch ID to receive it back in because you may have multiple dispatches off of a single purchase order. In this case, we're just going to use a purchase order. And I'm just going to select from a list, but normally you're going to type it in or possibly scan it if you're getting a barcode with that information on it from your vendor. I'm going to choose this second line item here, this PO3004, as my example. And you can see there's only one line item on this particular purchase order, but I could have multiple line items. I could also have, if I click on this, line detail information. So I can look at what the detail on that purchase order was. This is the same information you actually see across the screen, but you're seeing it more in a format like a report. Also, if I'm using a mobile device such as a phone, I can just click on that number if I had to contact that uh, vendor for some reason. What I can also do is if this item was on a delivery schedule, you can see this button is grayed out because this particular item, it doesn't have a delivery schedule, meaning it's one item for a certain quantity, but there's delivery schedules behind that, meaning possibly a hundred per month over a certain amount of time. This doesn't have it, but if it did, this button would light up and then we re receive against that delivery schedule line. Here, we're just receiving a typical normal uh, single line item. Clicking on the line also, I have an option to tell it to fill in the total that is due for me, but I could turn that off in my preferences also if I wanted to say, hey, I always want to type that number in. Uh, this way there are no mistakes possible that someone clicked on the line and did not realize the quantity that it was filling in. So that's an option whether you want to do that or not. I can say receive all if there was multiple line items on here and I, and I agreed that, yep, they're all in full and all is good. I can say with one click, it'll receive everything in full at the quantity that was ordered. Uh, or if there was multiple items, I would just pick the ones that I do want to receive and hit submit once I fill in a quantity. I could also tell from here if this purchase order is actually linked directly to a work order in which case this one happens to be, my links button lights up and I can click on that to see where this goes. So I can tell that this purchase order needs to go to the shear department for this job that's out there. Rather than receiving it to inventory, I could take it directly to the floor to that particular job. One of the next things that we can do after we do our purchase receipts is a receipt return. Let's say we have some bad parts. We can either do it by the receiver ID that's created after we do the purchase receipt, or we can pull it up by the purchase order ID itself. 
And this is a typical function that if you wanted to return items after they've been received, whether they've been vouchered or not, if we return them before vouchering, then it'll remove it from our received, not vouchered. Uh, if it's done after vouchering, it'll create the credit for us to that vendor or, or for that vendor for us. Uh, but simple process of just, just like a purchase receipt, it's the negative transaction or it's the opposite transaction. We're just telling it how many we're returning and saving that. Uh, purchase order lines due. This is nice to show us everything that's due to be coming in so we can get an idea of what should be coming in. And it's in receipt order for the, for the date that it should be received in. And as you can see, we do have some flags over on the right side that indicate certain things are late. And as you notice, demo database, everything's late. Uh, but theoretically, hopefully in your environment, you'll see green flags over there also for, for those purchase orders that are on time. But this is a great way of getting a good idea of, hey, this purchase order is late. You know, maybe we need to contact that vendor. I click on our vendor button. We have their phone number here and find out what the deal is with getting that part in. The other thing we can do is look at the purchase lines that have already been received in a date range. So if I was to choose, I just went back to 6-1-2020 to show all receipts since then. I could put a two date. So if I'm looking for a range, I can do that. But if I'm looking to, to say, show me all receipts, maybe for this week, I can choose that. And that's pretty much all there is to the purchase receiving. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Nick. Be sure to check out all of our videos in our educational series. The links are below.